possible. And so the, the primary uh, egress route for most emergencies, well, let me back up. Um, at one point, as soon as the rocket begins to be fueled, the primary uh, mode of egress is actually the spacecraft itself, which can carry the crew away to safety. Um, before that, there's a couple of other different types of emergencies that could happen on the pad um, that we want to protect for. And we have an elevator that's the primary, and it's a very um, unique elevator, fire safe, um, lots of uh, unique launch pad related uh, safety features on it um, is the primary mode of egress, and then we have similar to the, oh, excuse me, similar to the slide wire baskets, uh, a, another uh, kind of shoot escape system um, on LC40. So we ran a number of tests um, this week um, in a lot of different configurations, including incapacitated crew member. Could you send a, sh a stretcher down this, um, es essentially a slide? Um, you may see some test subjects from the qualification campaign on this panel. Um, and, and we completed all, all the required, um, <laughs> we created, completed all the required um, configurations. We looked at um, in a spacesuit, what if the spacesuit is a little bit wet um, because of a fire response uh, up on the pad? And so, um, yeah, that was the last piece of the system to come together. Um, it's checked out now. I think also this week we got the final external approvals as well. So I hope we get to fly a Dragon soon on um, off of 40. And I'll add a couple of things. <laughs> the, the, the shoot system that Sarah talked about is kind of an, um, a system that's used in a lot of industrial applications. A lot of different buildings use a similar kind of system. So. It is a, a very simple uh, system that uh, the, the company that SpaceX worked with has installed. We were out there looking at it the other day, um, and it's a very simple system, simple to use. And um, as Sarah said, we had NASA uh, fire crash experts uh, using that system, in addition to some of the, the, the CAPE fire experts going down that with our ground and mission support personnel, and, and also uh, health and medical um, engineering team out there uh, doing about three or four hours of testing and you know everybody that has used that system says it's really safe really easy to use so it's a pretty innovative solution um, and uh, you know we think it's going to be really good for crew crew missions down the road great thanks so much Sarah and Steve all right back to the room uh, we have another in the center aisle right here hi yeah this is for uh, for Joel um, you know, last uh, in the last couple of days, we received a report about the status of Zvezda looking at the um, uh, leak rate that has increased uh, on the Russian segment. Um, are the ha I have a this is kind of a two part question. So, how much uh, risk is there to crew right now? Um, actually, three part question. How much risk is there to crew right now? Uh, are the hatches sealed uh, in that area? And what is kind of the action plan for going forward with that leak and increased leak rate? Thank you. Sure. Uh, right now the hatch is closed and it's been closed uh, since uh, I believe last uh, middle of last week or so. The plan is to keep that hatch closed until uh, early April. Uh, right now we're working with our Roscosmos colleagues on what is the plan. Uh, you, when you go into that area and open that hatch, how long do you stay there? Do you keep the hatch open at night, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but we got a little time to go work that. But right now there's not a, a safety issue with the crew. Uh, that hatch is closed. Um, when that hatch is open, the leak rate is about two pounds a day, a little over two pounds a day. Great. Thank you, Joel. Uh, back to the room for additional questions. Another in the front row here. I don't come often, so I'll take advantage. Um, what What's the process like um, for adapting to life on the International Space Station? So the, the first week when the crew members are on board, we, don't, we give them uh, an hour um, of kind of re relaxed time or time adaptation time. We don't fully schedule them that first week. Um, these five days, they'll be handing over with Crew 7. So Crew 7 will be telling, hey, here's the lessons learned. Hey, when the ground calls up and says you have to do this activity, here's some of the things we learned to make it easier or more time efficient. And so uh, that first week is adapting the space. Um, you know, so you'll have uh, a fluid shift of the body, and so that takes a, a couple days or so. Um, but, you know, getting with the crew seven, understanding the lessons learned, and then, like I said, that first week we schedule them an hour or less, and then after that um, we put them to work. All right. Thank you, Joel. Any other questions here in the room? 
All right, seeing no hands raised, I'll take that as a cue for us to wrap things up. I know that it is uh, early or late, uh, depending on where you're watching from. So I want to thank the media for joining us here in the room, and especially those of you that also uh, ask questions over the phone as well. I want to thank our panel, Steve, Joel, and Sarah, for being up late uh, to take our questions. Before we let you go, we do want to remind you about docking. Uh, so Crew 8 is well on its way, and docking to the International Space Station is set for Tuesday. That is March 5th at approximately 3 a.m. and coverage is scheduled to begin at 1 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday morning and that will be on NASA TV. Uh, so thank you again for everybody that joined us today and until next time, go NASA, go SpaceX, and go Crew 8. Inside the suit-up room where we see our three astronauts and one cosmonaut. And the point of this card game is so that the commander loses, to use up his bad luck. Here they come, Crew 8, taking their first steps outside before their journey to the International Space Station. Crew is departing from the Operations and Checkout Building across Kennedy Space Center to Launch Pad 39A, walking over to get a good look at their rides to space. Commander Matt Dominic, Pilot Michael Barrett, walking down the crew access arm, Today, the techs are making sure their helmet is protected on the way in. Jeanette Epps, Alexandra Govenkin, our two mission specialists for Crew 8, walking on that sticky tape to grab anything before they ingress as well. We see four seats in the launch position. They're closing the hatch now. Full power and lift off of NASA Crew 8. Go Falcon, go SpaceX, and go NASA. Endeavor ascends a beacon of human mission. 1.7 million pounds of thrust now propelling Falcon 9 and Crew 8. Vehicle is pitching down range. It's a new era of pioneers, star sailors, thinkers, and adventurers. Three, two, one, zero, all engine running. Let's go.